Have you ever wondered why humans have just two sexes? Well, I have, and in my journey of researching the evolution of sex chromosomes, I think I might have found some clues to what's going on. So let's jump in. Now, before I start, I do want to give a disclaimer that I am talking about chromosomal sex, not hormonal sex, and certainly not gender. Gender expression is a whole other topic, and the way you express yourself is by no means limited to what your chromosomes are. But reproduction in humans is limited to our chromosomal makeup, and I want to know why. Why do we have just these two combinations that make fertile offspring? With evolution, it's a lot easier to answer the question of why not rather than why. So I think I'm going to answer two questions of why not. Why not one sex? And why not more than two sexes? Let's start with the easier of the two questions. Why not less than two sexes? The most straightforward answer is variability. If we were just one sex, we would reproduce by essentially cloning, and that would leave our offspring to have essentially the exact same DNA as us, with little to no variability. But we want variability. Variability and mutations can lead to beneficial changes such as the ability to sweat or the ability to speak. Combining and mixing two DNAs gives us more variation and thus more opportunities to have stronger offspring than simple cloning does. Evolutionary geneticists from this university and the Netherlands generated a computer model that placed cloning sex cells and typical sperm and egg cells in an environment where they could all reproduce. Consistently, the lack of variation in the simple cloning cells resulted in them dying off while the egg and sperm cells thrived and continued to reproduce. But this leads me to ask the question, if we want to increase variation, why not more than two sexes? And this one's a little harder to answer. You might be surprised to hear that many species actually do have more than two sexes, so we can look at this in nature. Many single-celled organisms have more than two sexes, including this one, which I can't pronounce, and this one, which has seven distinct sexes. But it's not just single cells. Complex organisms like us can also have more than two sexes. Clam shrimp, for example, have one male type and two hermaphrodite types. Cuttlefish and some worms also have a few different versions of males and females each. In a species that really takes it to the extreme, we can look at the mushroom. The mushroom, another one I can't pronounce, has several mating type genes that lead to 23,000 distinct mating combinations but not every individual can mate with all types. So you need a specific combination of genetic material for them to be sterile. Basically, you can't partner with just any mushroom. You have to find your perfect match. And this fact that you need to find your perfect match indicates to me why we only have two. It's what's easiest to find a match in. Hermaphrodite clam shrimp, for example, can only mate successfully with one out of three other individuals in their population. And the mushrooms have even less options. They need their mate to be the exact right type that will mate to combine and make offspring. With only two sexes, we can mate with exactly half of the individuals in our population. So with less options, there's just more chances to successfully reproduce. And two is the lowest number that will allow for genetic variation without making things too complicated. There's also a statistical issue with three sexes. In computer models, having three genders is not stable and drift can easily turn them into just two genders. So the simplicity of having two sexes might explain why there's only two. It could also be due to our mitochondrial DNA. For those of you who don't know, we get half of our chromosomal DNA from our mom and the other half from our dad. But we also have DNA in our mitochondria, and all of that comes from your mom. And there's a really good reason why our mitochondrial DNA only comes from one parent instead of a combination of the two. Mitochondrial DNA is the shape of a circle and it prefers to be from one parent. It doesn't like to recombine as much. So competition between two whole mitochondrial DNA sets is really not beneficial for the offspring. All it does is leave them with the extra step of having to eliminate one of the mitochondrial DNA sets so that they can have the better one. Now, evolution took this out of the question by making the mom always the one who has the mitochondrial DNA. It's the most convenient way for evolution to say, okay, you'll always get one set of mitochondrial DNA because there's two sexes options, 
and one of them has the mitochondrial DNA. With more than two sexes, you wouldn't as easily be able to split the population so perfectly so that half of it carries the mitochondrial DNA. So again, the simplicity of having just two has been favored over the course of evolution. Now, I gave a disclaimer at the beginning of this video, but I feel the need to give another one right here because I do not want this to in any way be used for hate speech. While evolution prefers the simplest way to reproduce, we are not just defined by how we reproduce. Females are not just eggs and males are not just sperm. The category of women includes XX individuals, XY transgender individuals, intersex individuals, and many more. Humans are complex social creatures with so much more meaning than just vessels for reproduction. Our chromosomes do not define us, but even so, it brings me a lot of comfort to know why we developed this way. We don't necessarily have to follow our evolutionary directions, but it always helps me to understand why we're like this. It's because of pure statistics. There's no morals guiding a binary and no judgment for variations in sex and sexual identity. It's just science trying to make babies in the most efficient way possible. And since this is science, I expect more data to come out, possible better computational models like the one I described that could change my opinion about why there's two. But those are my current thoughts on why we have two sexes. I hope you all enjoyed the video. It is the second in a series exploring the evolution of sex, so I will see you in the next one.